Hey, you can media family, Sergey Praknevsky here. And in this video, I will not be showing you how to create this fully automated menu in After Effects. So I'm not going to show you that in this video. However, we will cover that in the next video. In this video, we're going to talk about how to create one of these buttons for this menu first. So I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to show you how to set it up, how to rig it using expressions, master properties. And then in the next video, we're going to bring in that button that we finished into another composition. And I'm going to show you how to create this fully automated menu in After Effects. And by fully automated, I mean, we have no keyframes involved at all. The only thing that triggers these buttons is this shape layer that I'm moving left and right. As you can see, when I go to the left to this button, it activates that button and so on. So I'm going to show you how to do that in the next video. But in this video, let's talk about this button and let me show you how to set it up using basic expressions and master properties. All right, so let's create this button right here. And as you can see, we have three things. We have the text, we have the line, and also the background, this red shape layer. So let's start fresh. And to do that, we're going to click on this icon here, create new composition. I'm going to rename this to button. And the width is going to be, let's do 400 by, let's do 80, 80 pixels. So that's the size I'm going to go with, 2997 frame rate and duration 900. So that's my setup. I'm going to press OK. And next, what I need to do is create a new shape layer that I'm going to create stroke on. So we're going to create this, we're going to work on the stroke around the uh, composition. So I'm going to select the composition, double click on the shape tool. So we have a new shape. And in here, make sure you get rid of your fill and make sure you have your stroke selected. So make sure you have some stroke. And four pixels is what I want. The white color is what I want. In fact, I do have colors in here. Make sure it's the right one. That, those are the colors that I'm using, but you're not married to them. You can use any colors you want. So we do have a stroke, but the problem is this stroke is not correct. Even though it says it's four pixels, but it's not. It's actually only two because the other two pi uh, pixels are hiding behind it. So I'm going to quickly fix that. Let me change the name of it to line. And I'm going to use an operation called offset paths. And by the way, I'm going to be flying through here. So if you want to learn more about shape layers, I did spend like 40 some minutes talking about shape layers in the video a while ago. So if you want to check it out, definitely go to the bottom of this video in the description area, click on the video, learn about operations, shape layers, all of that stuff. I think you'll find it useful. So the way this works, um, this offset path will offset everything that's above it. And right now it's going to be offsetting this path, which it already has because the value of this is 10. So if I bring it to zero, we're back to normal. So if I shift it to the left, you can see it's going inward. And then if I do the opposite, it goes the opposite direction. But what I want to do for the width, right, which is four pixels, I want the half of that value, right? So I want not only half, but I also want negative two because we want to go in the opposite direction, right? So I'm going to say negative two. And then it's going to give me the correct width of my stroke. So if my width right here, right? So I'm going to select, by the way, I'm going to select this and then this amount, control select the other one, right? And then hit S twice to solo it so you can see it better. So each time we increase our stroke, whether it be like 10, right? We would also have to change this value to negative five, which can be a bit annoying if you constantly change things. So we can use expressions to fix this. So I'm going to pick whip from here to this stroke width. In other words, this amount, the offset amount is now going to be identical to this because it's copying that, right? Which we don't want kind of, right? What we want, I want this value, but I want half of it. And essentially what the expression we have here is just a bunch of English that is kind of like an address to this value. So all of this really means this number. So I would treat it as a number as well. So I would say this value, I want it to divide it by negative two. So in other words, I want the half of it, and then I want to push it in the negative value because we want to go inwards. So now if I change this to four, we'll get the correct value, right? You can see nothing is hiding. I know it's a it's an unnecessary change, but I'm OCD about that stuff. And it definitely, especially when you deal with expressions, you want things to be kind of correct. Anyway, that's how you fix that. So there you have it. Next, what we need to do is animate this thing. And to do that, before we do that, we're going to create a new null. So Control-Alt-Shift-Y. We have a new null. And I don't need to be 
seeing that in here. So I'm going to hide it. And I'm going to change it to controls. So we're going to add some controls inside of this null in here. And the first control we're going to add is this slider. And slider is just, it's just a property that really doesn't do anything. And you kind of use it to make your own menu, right? And so we're going to change this to animation. So this thing is going to drive everything. We're going to be linking things to it. Right now, if I slide on it, I mean, it just gives us a value, but it's not doing anything. So we'll have to use that value in, inside of our composition by using expressions. So now we need to animate this stroke. And to do that, we're going to use an action or in people call it different things, but I call it operation. So we're going to use an operation here and it's called trim paths. So that's what we're going to use. Again, the same concept here. You want to put it right underneath your path because that's where we're going to be trimming. And if I move on this start, you can see we're actually creating something interesting. So that's how you animate this thing. And I want for this value to be driven by, I'm going to select this, press E to see this effect in here. So there it is. I'm going to select it, hit S twice to solo it, which didn't do much, but yeah. So we're going to be using this value. It's the same thing as that. It's just we're seeing it in a timeline. And we're going to be driving this animation. So I'm going to select this and uh, offset as well. So I'm going to select both of them and then hit S twice to solo it because that, that's the only thing I want to see right now. So next, I'm going to Alt-click on the stopwatch to create an expression. And we're going to create a new variable. And again, variable is just a made up English that doesn't mean anything unless you assign something to it. So I'm going to create a made up word called animation slider. Made up, nothing, doesn't mean anything. But then we're going to pick whip to this slider, this value. So now this made up word means something. Now, every time I refer to it, it really means this value. OK, that's all that is. And then we're going to say, we're going to use a linear method, which, which is an actual, it's not a made up thing, it exists. But we're going to give it a variable. I'm going to say just L for linear, because I'm not, I can't think of a better name. So L is going to stand, you know, that's going to be our linear method. So then we're going to say linear. And in here, we're going to say something. We're going to say, all right, this animation slider, this value, right, this address to this value, we want the number starting at 0 to 100. So that's going to be the lowest it'll go and the highest it'll go. And then when this value, this variable is 0, I want for this value, right, the next, next two numbers are going to be relating to this or to this property. So when it's 0, when this thing is 0, I want this to be 100. Now, when it's when this value is 100, I want it to be 0. So I hope that makes sense. That's all we did. We referring to this property, and we're taking the minimum and the maximum, and then we're assigning it to this value. OK. And obviously, we have a problem here. So what's the problem? Make sure I copy this right. OK, so I, make sure you copy that right. So. I do have the the expression already working. So if I set it to zero, you can see we don't see anything. But if I go to 100, you can see it starts animating. So essentially, we just gave control from here to that. So we don't have to animate this value. We can just animate one value, and it controls this. So it's that simple. You can leave it as is, or you can define it by pressing L. Right? You say, run this L. But that's probably the proper way of doing it. But I'm going to select this, copy it. You can also say copy expression only, but that's what I'm going to go with. And then next, we're, we already have this animating. So we're, we're done with the line, except, let me show you. Obviously, the problem that I have with the line right now is that it starts right here. And our original button, if you move on this controller, you can see it not only at zero, not only does it not start there, but it also has like a, this line right here, and then it goes from there. So we have to set this up. So we're going to play with the trim paths. We're going to play with all these values. I'm going to select them, press, press S twice to solo it. And then we're going to play with the offset some. OK, so right now it starts in here, but I want to offset it. So we're going to move around on this value. And I want to start about here. So 150 will do it. That's exactly what I want. So now you can see it's starting here. But again, at 0, 
we don't see anything. I do want it to already have some revealed. And that's what we're going to play with this start. So we're going to change this value. And let me turn off this expression for a second. So let's play with this. So I want it to start about here. And I'm going to zoom in so I can be more precise. So we're going to take it back. Yeah, let's go back some. Obviously, when I move up and down, you can see it changes it big time. But if you press Control, you can go to the decimal value. So I don't know, something like that probably. Well, something like that is good. You don't, you don't have to be precise, but that's the value I want, 91.7. So instead of 100 right here, I'm going to say 91.7. It's that simple. And when you do that, when you make the change, you can see that it activated my expression again. If it didn't, make sure you click on it to activate the expression again. So let's see what that looks like now. So if I, let me zoom back in. Okay. So if I move in this value, you can see at zero, we actually see this line right on the side here, which is exactly what I want. And then you can see it 100, it goes all the way. That's good. Now, another thing I want to point out here, if I go to the composition settings, control K or composition, I think it's, yeah, composition settings. In here, if I change, let's say, the width of it to like 500 or something, you can see that we do have a bit of a problem because everything changed, right? It doesn't give us the ability, like, let me show you what I'm talking about. Like, we would have to actually go here and be like size and then adjust it in here, All right? Let's take it up to 500. And I mean, if you have a lot of shape layers, that can take you some time. But if you know for sure that this stroke is going to be around the edge of your composition, you can kind of rig it up using expressions. You can just alt click on a stopwatch. And then inside of your square brackets, you can say for the X value, right, for the first value, we're going to say we want the width. Now, this word width is not a made up word. It's an actual keyword that refers to the width of our composition. So when you say width, it's going to give you the size of this composition. And then for the height, for this Y value, so X is side to side, right, the width. And then for the height, we're going to say height. So now when I click away, you can see that not, nothing happened, but if I change the size of the composition back to 400, you can see that it automatically resized the composition and also automatically adjusted our line shape, which is really cool. So these are pretty cool. In fact, I'm going to copy this. I'm going to use this later, maybe. Maybe not. So now we have the line. It's fully rigged. And I can prove it to you again. It's working. Now what I want to do, I'm going to create this right here, this red shape. And to do that, I'm just going to select this line again and just duplicate it. Put it underneath there. And let's change it BG for background. And I don't want, let's see, what do we not want? So I don't want the trim path. I'm going to get rid of it. And also offset path. We don't want that as well. The stroke, let's see what kind of expressions we have. So we only have the size. So that's really all I want. But this one, the reason why I wanted to duplicate it because it kept the width and the height. So when we change the size of the composition, this will adjust as well. But we don't, let me solve this. We don't want the stroke, so I'm going to get rid of it. And we do want the fill. So I'm going to change it to something red, which I already have that color, which is this one right here. So we have the red. So now we are done with the background. Well, setting it up. Now we need to do some kind of animation. And for this, to animate this, as you can see in here, we have, right, it does this interesting drop down kind of thing, which is cool. So we're going to create this. And to do that, we're just going to use a simple effect called, I think it was line sweep. So I'm going to go here and let's go to transition and then we'll find this line sweep. And the way it works is pretty simple. You just move in this value, right? It gives you something interesting, but you can adjust the direction here. So let's go to 90 because we want to go from up down. Okay. Now it does give us a lot of cuts, but I only want five. And this thickness right here, if you take it to the size, up to the size of our composition, which is 400, you can see it gives us one big cut right here. So if I move on it, it just does that. But I want five. So I'm going to take this value and then divide it by five. And there you have it. So it's that simple. And then I'm going to reveal this stuff in my timeline here. So I'm going to select this press E to reveal the line sweep. And we're going to play with this completion. So we're going to add 
an expression to that. So in fact, I'm going to copy an expression we've already done. So I'm going to select this, press E twice to see the expressions. And we're going to copy this one right here. So I'm going to copy it. And then we're going to alt click on the stopwatch for the completion. And then we're going to paste that in here. So now we have this expression, but I'm going to change it from instead of 91.7, let's do 100. So again, the same thing for that slider, animation slider from 0 to 100. When it's 0, I want this value to be 100. And when it's 100, I want it to be 0. Let's see what that does. So at, let's see, at 0, we get nothing. And then when we move on it to 100, you can see it's fully complete. So that in itself is already pretty cool, but we're not done yet. We need to create text. So we do have two things created. We have the line, we have the background. Now we need to bring this text in. So let's click on this type tool. Let's type something like title. Okay. And then I'm going to center this pivot point to the center of this text by pressing Control Alt Home. And then we're going to center this whole text to this composition by pressing Control Home. So now we have the text and I'm going to keep it at 60 pixels in size, but you can change it to whatever it is you want. And then we're going to play with scale and also let's do opacity. So press S for scale and then Shift T for opacity to have both of them. And I'm going to drop it right underneath this controls. So now we're going to reuse the same expression. So for the opacity, I'm going to alt click on the stopwatch and paste that same expression that we used before. So when it is zero, I want the opacity to be, let's do 40. And when it is, make sure you have commas. Okay, and when it is 100, I want for it to be 100 as well. Let's make sure that works. So zero, you can see it's 40. And then 100, you can see it's, it's 100. So again, zero gives us 40, and then 100 gives us 100. So gives me exactly what I want. So let's copy this and let's do the same thing for the scale. So alt click on the stopwatch to create an expression. I mean, you can see, even though we're doing a lot of expressions, but it's like repetitive. It's nothing complicated. It's very, very easy to understand. So then we're dealing with the property. So this one was only one dimensional property, but we're dealing with something that has two dimensions. So we're going to paste the same expression to here. But the problem with this is that this one applies to something like one dimensional. So if I let go, of, it's going to give me an error, as you can see. And the reason why, because we only have one value here. So we would have to put something like square brackets. And then in here, I'm going to say for the first value, I want the L. And then for the second value, I want the same L and the same L pretty much. Yeah. And we just have to phrase it differently. That's all. But it's the same concept. And when I let go, you can see it gives me the exact same thing. So when it is zero, our text size is 40 pixels, but let's take it to 60. Yeah, 60 is fine. And then when it is 100, it sizes up. So really, that is all we need as far as like rigging this button. What I also like, I like to color these. So let's take like maybe, let's change it to orange. And the reason why I like that, because if you want to select all of them, you can just right click and say, you know, obviously it doesn't make sense because there's few, but if you have a lot, then it's so much easier to select things, but it's a good practice to have. So we have this thing rigged up, ready to go. The only thing we need to do, we need to convert this composition into master properties so we can use it in other compositions. And to do that, just make sure you go to window and bring up this essential graphics panel. So now we have it living in here and make sure you pick the correct composition. So mine is button. So I'm going to find button. There it is. And then I'm going to change this to button. I keep things pretty simple. And then in here, this is, again, if you didn't see a video I did on master properties, you should definitely check it out. The link for it is at the bottom of this video. But essentially what you do here, you just drag properties that you want in here as a menu to see in other compositions. So we want the, I'm going to select this, press E to reveal the effect. So we want the slider in here because, again, that's the slider that controls the whole animation. So we're going to say this one's going to be animation. Okay. And what else? So we also want the ability to change the text. So I'm going to go here, select this text and look for source. There you go, source text. And then click and drag and drop it in here. And I'm going to change this to text. And really, that is it. I mean, after that, you would 
you would just go over here and create a new composition, right? And then change it to whatever size you want. And then let me get rid of this panel. Then you would take your button. By the way, I'm going to place in this tutorial folder. And in this composition, you would just drag it in here. And now you have ability to do all kinds of stuff. You can go to master properties, right? We rig things up in the side of this composition. So all we have to do is just move in this value. And you can see from zero, it gives us that. But when we move up on it, it gives us something different. So it is fully rigged up. And then we can also have the ability to change the text. So I can just right click here and say edit value. And let's change it to Euchre Media. Okay. And so now we have a button that's fully rigged with Euchre Media on it. But then again, I can just duplicate this button. And this next button, I can do the same thing. I can adjust the animation and I can also change the text to anything I want. I can say something like title two. And there you have it. So that's how you create this very dynamic button in After Effects. All right, well, this is the end of this tutorial. I really hope you found it useful. But in the next video, we're going to take the button that we created in this tutorial, and we're going to create this really awesome, fully automated menu in After Effects. So make sure you come back for that. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, and make sure you like this video. But in the meantime, my name is Sergey Proknevsky, and this is ukramedia.com.